everyone. Welcome to today's webinar. I'm Trima Stankard and I work in events and partner marketing here at Titan HQ. We're delighted to have you all here today to discuss the topic of how Titan HQ and Augment can help you fortify M365. As we all, as we all know, uh, Microsoft 365 is a powerful platform and it comes with disadvantages and complexities. In today's discussion, we will demonstrate how Titan HQ and Augment can bolster your M365 security. Before we get started, just some brief housekeeping. Um, so the webinar is being recorded and will be sent to everyone after the event and you can send on to whoever you like. We'll also send you two very informative eBooks uh, related to the topic today. And you can ask questions throughout the webinar and we'll answer them at the end. If there's any that we've missed, we will contact you directly and yeah, we'll let you know. So yeah, I'm delighted to be joined here by two excellent speakers today. Both are very happy to be here. Uh, so to introduce uh, George Smith, uh, Head of Community and Strategic Partnership at Augment. George's role is to oversee many different aspects of Augment's programs, including community, events, distribution, vendor partnerships, and strategic alliances. All of the goal of helping their MSP partners grow. George is an award-winning public speaker a cybersecurity specialist who is instrumental in enhancing George's corporate development and growth. George, thanks a million for being here today. Thanks, Trevor. It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for having us. Where in the world are you today, George? I am in sunny Ontario. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, about, uh, I don't know, 28 degrees here. We, uh, we don't get spring anymore here. It's just popped straight into summer, but I'm not complaining. Oh, we're very jealous, aren't we, Owen? <laughs> so just to give Owen a little introduction and before we get started as well. So we've got Owen Higgins, who's a product, oh, sorry, product, product manager here at Titan HQ. Owen has over 20 years of experience in IT and is, has embarked on his journey in a realm of technology as a software engineer uh, back in, in 2000. His passion for innovation and profit solving has propelled him through a series of pivotal roles within software development including stints as Scrum Master, Product Owner, and ultimately a seasoned Product Manager at Titan HQ. Owen, thanks so for being here. I, I can tell you're so delighted to be here with us today in sunny Galway. <laughs> Thank you, Treva. Uh, almost, almost sunny, it's almost sunny, yeah. yeah typical spring yeah, weather. Yeah, nearly there. But def definitely not 28 degrees anyway. No, uh, I don't think we'll see that for another month or two. No. Anyone that's listening in the chat, let us know where you're tuning in from. I always think it's really interesting to see what areas of the world of the world where we're um hit it, we're targeting or hitting. And let us know if you've seen George presenting um or speaking at any events. George is uh very well traveled in the North American space. Um I would say I'm definitely not as well traveled as George is. But um, anyway, I'll leave you alone now. I'll get started. So, um, Owen, let's kickstart things with yourself. Can you give us a quick oh. overview of Titan HQ? Absolutely. Uh, so, if you can move to the next slide, Trevor, please. Yeah. Lovely. Uh, thank you. So, Titan HQ have been a. We're about 25 years old, and we've been an email security firm from the start. Uh, originally that started with hardware firewalls but we've grown and we've evolved and uh, now we've uh, we started very very small but we've a presence around the world now our products are sold in over 150 countries uh, we use data centers uh, right around the globe uh, we are headquartered in Galway here on the west coast of Ireland uh, but we have a US office in Shelton Connecticut Connecticut uh, almost 3,000 partners globally and over 12,000 customers. So it's uh, from very small beginnings, we've grown quite a bit. Uh, next slide, please, Triva. Thank you. Uh, so I'll, just using the numbers, um, we, present, we protect uh, 3.7 million mailboxes. Daily, uh, we deal with 1.5 billion uh, DNS requests. We scan over 700 million URLs, and uh, we're very proud of our 93% customer retention rate. So uh, we've been successful so far. Uh, Treva, next slide, please. 
So this slide details the uh, Titan HQ product suite. And there are really two cores to the business, uh, our email security uh, products and our DNS filtering. Um, over the years, we've put a lot of time into building a platform that's indexed toward the things that are important to MSPs. Um, from the DNS perspective, we have Web Titan, it's the blue icon uh, at the bottom left. Um, it does DNS filtering. It's a the application configuration is policy based, and uh, it's designed really to help prevent uh, malware and phishing from the DNS perspective. Um, with email, we start at the top. We've got Spam Titan, our big, biggest seller. It's a secure email gateway, uh, very very popular. We've recently introduced Fish Titan which is an ICES platform, uh, and that sits on top of Spam Titan. Uh, gaining in popularity, we're very, very pleased with how it's going. You know, uh, it's designed for MS, designed from the ground up for MSPs. And, you know, things like licensing, uh, we've made exceptionally simple. Features like post-delivery remediation uh, are there to make your administrator's lives easier. Um, and it forms the architecture of uh, the future platform that we are building. Um, so, interestingly, oh, excuse me. So, we have further email products. Uh, Encrypt Titan, make sure that your emails are encrypted uh, during, you know, during movement. Arc Titan uh, is our archiving product. If you've got uh, archiving needs or, or have regulatory needs for archiving, we can help solve that. Uh, Safe, Safe Titan is our security awareness training product. Um, it offers phishing simulation, end user training. Again, if there's a regulatory need for this kind of product, we've got you covered. Uh, certainly, if you have cyber insurance, uh, this can help uh, fill the need for uh, training with regard to that. Uh, as I mentioned, we're along the journey of building a new platform to rep represent these technologies uh, through a single pane of glass. Uh, we've just started that journey, and we're very excited about where it will bring us. Um, so that's my summary of Titan HQ's products. Uh, I'll hand it over to George to talk about Augment. Thanks, Owen. Uh, good afternoon, good morning, good evening, everyone, uh, wherever you are in the world. Uh, for those of you who have not heard of Augment, quick little background here for you. So we are a Canadian company that was founded in 2020, uh, in January, so right before the pandemic, and our full intention was to help MSPs uh, secure and manage SaaS applications, which, you know, once COVID hit, everything kind of exploded. I don't know how many people on the call knew about or even using Zoom uh, in 2019, but I bet you uh, in 2020, you sure uh, were using Zoom and some other bits and pieces. So the interesting thing with Augment is we were founded by the same guys that started Enable all the way back in 2000. So these guys are serial entrepreneurs. This is their latest company. Uh, and uh, one of our co-founders, Gavin Garbutt, is a very uh, sort of big picture. And he definitely sees where the channel and where IT is going, certainly by the end of the decade, as the network continues to shrink. MSPs are going to have a necessary and needed focus on who the user is and specifically what they're doing. So everything is kind of moving from more reselling assets and hardware to actually risk management, and specifically the user and what they're doing. Uh, so within the Augment platform, we have three main modules, Discover, Secure, and Engage. Uh, and we are very, very pleased to share that, you know, we have over a million licenses sold worldwide across the globe. Next slide, please. So with uh, the Augment platform, what we're really trying to do and center in on is the problem with Envoy 6.5. We've been around for three years now, and that's where our partners are requesting more and more attention and features. So if we take a step back and think about a senior technician in the life of an MSP business, they have a lot of things coming at them on a daily basis that I've outlined below. So some examples might be if you're working with an external SOC, 
they might be getting messages from that self to say, hey, these things are happening, you should check these out. We're inventing. These are these escalated alerts, you should be dealing with these. We might also have help desk technicians, whether that's an intern or an L1, kind of saying, hey, I actually don't know what to do with this ticket or this issue, I've taken it as far as I can, I'm escalating it to you, so please look at this as well. Uh, again, you may also then have those salespeople saying, hey, Mr. Senior Tech, uh, listen, I've got this big presentation or this big meeting. I need these reports for this customer or for this prospect. Can you go and pull this data for me? And the same thing with finance. You know, Every month there's billing reconciliation. People are trying to balance books. And if we look, use the example of M365, it can get really, really tricky to begin to understand as an MSP within your CSP, how many licenses do you own? Where are those assigned? How has that changed in the past 60 to 90 days? And you know who, who's, who's using what? So with, if we hop to the next slide, this is really what Augment is about, is, is simplifying the life for a senior technician. So we break our platform into kind of two main pieces. One is the 365 security. So we enable you to uh, secure, uh, and then alert a monitor on the M365 uh, suite. So you can, you, you've got our templates you can set up to get everything hardened within a few clicks. But as most people know on this call, security is, is not a product, it's a discipline. Uh, it's something that you don't necessarily set and forget. You need to consistently monitor it. And so we give you the ability to alert a monitor on the 365 environment. So we have internal alerts for things like policy drift, if there's any changes made by a user or anything becomes deprecated over time, as well as external alerts. So people actively trying to break down the door, whether it's risky sign-ins from blacklisted countries or suspicious activity, that kind of thing. On the management side, we have help desk efficiency through the Engage module. Simply put, this is like the Fisher Price version of uh, resolving tickets within the 365 environment. I'm talking things like password resets, onboarding, offboarding, turning on MFA, all with a click of a button. What that means is that instead of having an L3 or senior technician begin to resolve these tickets, you can actually set up your sales team or an office administrator or your kid in Augment and they can now tick the user and do the thing with the click of a button. Lastly, with the licensing and reporting, we actually have a license module that pulls in all of your licensing information and easily allows you to see how many licenses you have and how those are spread across your tenants and even see the change in deltas from month to month. So again, instead of having your CFO or office manager pester a senior technician at the end of every month asking for uh, you know, like license counts and who's got what, you can give them access to Augment and they can pull that report themselves with the click of a button. Next slide, please, Treva. So in terms of setting Augment up, super simple. Basically, what we want MSPs to do is you're going to auto suck in all of your tenants into our multi-tenant uh, dashboard that's split up across kind of some different key pieces of functionality. Apply security best practices with one click using our different templates. So we have best practices templates you can apply. We have compliance specific templates you can apply, and you can even edit and create your own. Once those templates are enabled, that's going to make sure that that 365 environment is hardened. But then we're also connected with all the ma major PSAs, so Autotask, ConnectWise, Halo, uh, Synchro, so that if anything does change or anything happens, you get a ticket straight through to your PSA. And finally, with our reporting and API, it's very easy for any of your staff at your MSP location to just go in and request whatever it is they want. So if a salesperson wants to get their hands on the risk report, no problem. CFO wants the license report piece of cake. And so again, it's just empowering your team to have the things that they need and want within 365 environment while making sure your technicians, their life is made easier actually monitoring and securing the environment. <clears throat> Next slide, please. Thank you. Uh, so Owen, I'll kick it back to you. Thanks. Thank you very much, George. Um, so the question here is, why is it important to secure M365? And the simple answer is because no solution is perfect. Uh, M365 comes with security, absolutely, but it's not secure out of the box. And Microsoft are great, the products are great, but uh, they're not, uh, you know, security lapses happen. Um, there are examples, multiple examples of why this, this might happen. Uh, Compromised Teams accounts, 
uh, it's quite possible to see this. Uh, research, research has shown that 40% uh, of M365 tenants have had at least one unauthorized login attempt. You know, the same research proved that there were undocumented APIs uh, enabled. Uh, it, sorry, that could enable a compromised team account to spread into other aspects of your M365 environment. Um, your employees are constantly targeted by phishing. It's just a fact of life at this point. We see it in our data. Uh, plenty of phishing mails are getting through M365. Um, the FBI, in their annual report, identify phishing and spoofing as the top crime type and business email compromised, which is delivered by phishing typically, um, lost the second most amount of money, uh, according to the FBI, in 2023. That's three billion and spread across a variety of sectors and sizes. So being small is not a defense. Um, there are, as George pointed out, uh, many configuration complexities with M365. There's a lot of work to be done, and if you're an MSP with multiple tenants across multiple customers, uh, that's an awful lot of work for you to make sure that everything is configured to the standard that you need. Um, poor authentication hygiene uh, can help uh, in security, and there are plenty of attacks uh, targeted at this. Um, I was reading about one the other day uh, called Evo Gen X2, uh, which is a phishing framework that bypasses multi-factor multi, multi authentication. Um, depending on, it can be blocked by M365, but that will depend on your license level and the configuration that you're applying. It's not blocked by default. So, you know, uh, point five here, attacks and vectors targeting M365 that make administration challenging. There are Microsoft is, M M365 is just a phenomenal product that is uh, so successful. It is the big target for malicious actors. It's the one everybody wants to crack. And so there are multiple vectors uh, and multiple uh, malicious, malicious actors targeting the solution. So because security is not perfect in M365, this is essentially a problem for you. Uh, Trevor, if you could move to the next slide, please. Yeah, just some further discussion about this. And, and George, by the way, chime in at any time you want. Um, if you look at, on the left column, the interconnected 365 system, uh, there are many, many interconnected apps. It, it's, it's a brilliant product suite. But those apps have separate separate configurations, separate privileges, separate settings. Uh, that can create problems if you, as an MSP, are managing and securing multiple environments. You know, M three six five is wonderfully collaborative, but the result of that can be exposed data, and there can be data flow and security gaps. Uh, again, a consolidated approach to security measures is beneficial here. Uh, and licensing complexities, and George touched on this uh, previously, um, you know, a disparity in security between M365 and other platforms uh, can be a result of licensing complexities. Uh, and needless to say, not just that, but different license levels offer different levels of security. So depending on what your customer has bought and bought from you, you need to know how to secure and make as, as watertight as possible. Uh, there are, of course, a human-centric perspective, because uh, the human firewall is the most critical element here. Uh, email-born exploits. Uh, with email, unfortunately, your front door is always open to malicious actors. And given that the cornerstone of M365 is Outlook, um, then you are going to be a recipient of email-born threats. That's just a fact of life. Um, because there are so many apps, you have essentially got an interconnected attack surface. Um, Outlook's Teams, Office, we already spoke about Teams, spoken about Outlook, uh, Office apps, 
also under attack. Everybody's heard about uh, Excel uh, problems. Uh, even earlier this year, uh, the Ukrainian government uh, got hacked by a, uh, a malicious PowerPoint delivered over Signal. Or uh, so you know, not a traditional vector, not email born, but somebody uh, got access to a PowerPoint that had been corrupted and it delivered a, a malicious payload. Luckily for them, nothing happened. I add on the, the interconnected attack surface, like it's something that I feel like MSPs, it's a real lever to pull on for your, your customers to help just simplify how everything is connected. And, and M365 is a great place to start. That's what your business runs on. And if someone gets access to that, you're going to be in trouble. So even something as maybe innocuous or random as another application, being in the news for getting breached, that's something you want to pay attention to because it's very, very easy to connect the dots to see how that can easily lead to it negatively impacting your business. And, and the key thing I would just point out to your customers as an MSP is it's very, very likely that if you're not already using a password manager, your employees are using their corporate email and their corp and, and the associated password, which is probably what they use for Microsoft for the vast majority of other tools and applications that they're using. And so if one of those gets breached and this, those credentials are leaked, sure, someone may not care about getting access to MailChimp or whatever, but they're certainly going to try try their hand at the at 365. And if they get in there, then yeah, you're in big trouble. Yep, exactly. Uh, a final point on this slide are the configuration complexities uh, associated with M365. We've touched on it already. Um, you know, an example of, of where there's a failure here is the default allowance for external uh, Teams users to be able to message other tenants. Uh, there are potential risks associated with all of this. Uh, Trila, shall we move to the next slide? Great, thanks, Jeeva. So why is an MSP mindset shift required to achieve high levels of security and business growth? So what we're going to talk about here is, is maybe just ex like delving into, you know, 365. It, it's a huge, like, as I want to say, it's a great platform. It's a great tool. The reality is, though, it does need work. Um, part of the problem that comes with that when it comes to securing it is there's a bit of an assumption gap. So that this idea that your clients, whether it's a plumber, a hospital, a school, whoever, kind of just assume, well, they're my IT guy, they take care of it. And so we really need to start not only unpacking some of that, but making sure we're educating our, our clients. So Trevor, we can hop right into it. So the first thing I'm going to do is go through some key stats. Uh, this is actually something, guys, that uh, I would take a screenshot of or grab yourselves. This is in very, very, very small print. Uh, in some Microsoft documentation. Uh, and I'm not gonna read the whole thing, but essentially what it's saying is, uh, yeah, we're not secure out of the box. Um, because we're not because we're not secure, but we've also put this in fine print, we're also not uh, uh, liable for any sort of legal um, uh, litigation action either. So if I was an MSP, this is something I'd be putting in my presentations, in my lecture and saying, look, we're going to have a conversation around security and the need for that and the, the cost associated. But I want you to understand that this isn't coming from me or MSP. This is actually coming from Microsoft. Like they are not secure. They admit it. Here it is in black and white from Microsoft. And if we go up to the next couple of slides, there's some other stats that I would definitely encourage you to share as well. Uh, 6.1 million. 365 users find that 90% uh, have gaps in essential security protections, highlighting the urgent need for more robust security. You know, it's, it's 2024, guys. Like Technology is rapidly advancing, but it's also never going to be this slow again, which is crazy to think about. Just look at AI in terms of how fast things are going. It's really, really hard as an MSP to try and keep up with you know, general best practices, let alone security best practices. So I think, you know, Let's take a moment and understand that that can feel a little bit overwhelming sometimes. So start with the cornerstone, and that can be the the 365 environment. That if you look after that, that's a core piece of your your partners and your clients' business. Like look after that and focus and hone in on that. And from there, use that as a story to talk about broader security issues that Owen's highlighted. Phishing is huge. Cybersecurity awareness training is needed. You know, this ability to monitor things and get away from oh, you're you're spying on. 
Oh, well, actually, yeah, we are because we need to. Because you guys, we, we need to be able to see who's using what, and we need to be able to block certain things that might be at risk or or even kind of secretly uh, malicious. But it's time for MSPs to kind of step up and, and really own being that IT expert and using some of these stats, using platforms like Titan or Augment can really cement you in that position. Next uh, slide has another crazy um, stat as well. So uh, for all those who have registered and joined today, we actually did an ebook on this uh, that highlights basic security hygiene is protecting against 99% of attacks. And this is actually from Microsoft themselves. I'm not going to say I feel uh, bad for them, but every year they do kind of repeat their message of saying, look, guys, if you just do like these five things, and really, really enforce them and monitor for them and make sure they're on and enabled all the time, you're going to vastly increase the security of the 365 platform. And so we've taken that 50 page white paper, which we know that you guys don't have time to sit and read through uh, on a Monday morning and condense it into a nice absorbable ebook that we're happy uh, to share as an editable copy as well if you want to white label it. But ultimately, it just simplifies here. If you do these five things, you'll be able to prevent. Uh, the vast majority of uh, uh, cyber attacks. Another key thing I would highlight is, I, I saw this, I actually posted this stat the other day on, on LinkedIn. I think it was something like 89% of small businesses still believe that they're like too small or too insignificant to be hacked. And, you know, it is amazing to me that this this thought and opinion is still prevailing despite the huge increases we're seeing in in cyber crime and you know the reality is is that cyber criminals aren't having that sniper approach anymore where they're researching the biggest juiciest target that they can get and taking months and months of planning to try and and, and, and breach that particular corporate account it's a shotgun approach it's the low-hanging fruit it's just just fire the machine gun and see what hits and um, to give some some key examples and again this is something i would highlight with clients i'd be like okay you think you're too small let me explain to you how much of a, a good business it is to be a cyber criminal right now I'm not even a technical person, but if I can get on Reddit or some online forum and work out how to get on the dark web, here are some things that I can do on the dark web. I can just hire someone for 250 bucks for a job, okay? And if you think about if you use any type of um, you know online platform for getting your PowerPoints done or helping someone with SEO, it's the same on the dark web. People will come, they'll, yep, yeah, I'll attack this. I'll get, here's this ransomware kit or uh, here's a list of stolen usernames and passwords uh, you know, for, for a buck, okay? Uh, the, the key one for me is that actually that ransomware kit, you don't even have to do it yourself. You can just simply pay for it and say, here's a ransomware kit. Um, Owen, uh, if you can you know, actually deploy this and execute this ransomware attack for me, I've already bought everything you need and I'll, I'll give you 30% of whatever we get off it, okay? So it's a booming, it's a booming business uh, and your clients need to understand that they're just the lowest hanging fruit and a cyber criminal would rather go and get eight grand off 10 different companies uh, in a day by just doing something simple than spending months trying to, to breach a, a massive fortune 500 company. Next slide please, Treva. So one of the phrases I like to use is like educate to proliferate. So these are some of the slides now I'm going to take you guys through that if, if I was an MSP, this is the story that I'd be telling to, to my clients. So, you know, on the, and it starts with, with those stats. So on the next slide, you guys are going to see some, some pretty critical stats. And uh, I'm, I'm a bit of a stat nut. I really love it to like, really love enhancing my stories um, with them. So Trevor, we can pop to the, the next slide, please. Um, so here's some key things, you know, uh, 1 billion emails were exposed last year worldwide. That's crazy, right? Like, that's, <laughs> you know, what's that? You know, a good fraction of the entire population of this planet. Uh, you know, so, uh, you know, if Owen was mentioning earlier around, you know, BEC and phishing, like that's, there's a stat that you guys can use. Uh, three cyber attacks happen every two seconds next year is what the estimate is so it's just constant uh and 60 percent of businesses your size as in you know small to medium business mr customer that suffer a breach will go bankrupt so if something bad does happen it's more than half likely that you're going to go out of business and i also want to highlight you know there's been a 775 increase in the past four years and it's not just russia and north korea and wherever it's happening all over the world as indicated by this map People in the America, Brazil, Spain, Ireland, 
everyone's cashing in if, if, if they have the skill set uh, and, and the lack of conscience to do so. So if you go to the next slide, we've got some more kind of key story points. So the key thing I would say, and, and this is this is really guys, like if you're on the webinar, this is the key thing that I would that I would take away from the conversation today is, is keep security simple. As soon as you go, go in, even talking about like BEC, you know, people are like, well, what is that? Would be you know business email compromise. Even that still may be a little bit too too much as an acronym. So really, really simplify it. And what I would do is you use these five key pillars to tell the story of what a breach looks like. And even define what a breach is because a lot of your customers probably aren't entirely sure what a breach or cyber incident means. They think it's the Death Star exploding. We all on this call know that that's not true. It's more of the ninja approach, snakes slithering in unbeknownst to you. And it's gonna, uh, I think there's a stat where it's, it's almost like 200 days in some instances before a breach is notified. So let's explain to our customers exactly what that looks like. So number one, Owen called about earlier, phishing. Phishing is a big part of it. A phishing email is successfully delivered. Phishing email, for you know, you can explain that to them. We uh, use the, that the Nigerian prince reference that we've all had back in the day of you know, there's a massive bit of uh, money waiting for you. Just contact me or click this link. Uh, very easy to understand a phishing email. That then moves into social engineering, okay, which is where that 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 particular employee is is baited and coerced into taking certain actions, such as clicking a link or giving away information. The next part then is that they will have access. So particularly if you do not have the right configurations in place, again, coming back to what we talked about earlier, there is a labyrinth sometimes it feels like of configurations to enable that deprecate over time. Or if you try to use shortcuts like PowerPoint to get them done quickly, they deprecate over time because things change names or where they live. But ultimately if those aren't in place, the wall is down, it's easy. Once someone has you know, the, the door open, they can walk straight through. They have the password. If no MFA is configured, it's very, very easy. Then the actual application security. So now the bad actor actually has access to corporate systems and no one knows. And they can begin to deploy ransomware, start harvesting data. And that's ultimately what, what ends up happening in step five here, which is essentially data loss and, and corporate corruption. So we've got that last box there. Yeah. So ultimately, corporate files are corrupted and deleted. So I would use these these simple five pillars to explain to a non-technical customer this is a breach. And then moving on to the next slide, you can then begin. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. We've got a poll first, actually. Thanks, Trina. Um, so just for folks on the call, be very, very interested just to understand from your perspective, which of these pillars do you find most challenging with your customers? So, you know, we can all kind of look at phishing, you know, do, do they hate it because they, they don't like um, getting the emails that make them feel bad if, uh, if they click on something? Do they hate sitting through, you know, cybersecurity awareness training? Are they resistant to paying for backup? Do they even know what that they need to pay for enhanced Microsoft security? Uh, let us know what you find is the most challenging. I'll just give uh, folks a couple of seconds to click their answer. It's interesting just looking at the results coming through. Um, most 62 uh, percent so far is phishing we're still uh, waiting for a couple more to vote but a uh, very interesting statistics that we can share uh, in a couple minutes yeah and in the in the chat as well like uh, if you feel free to expand on that like why is phishing the, the biggest problem is it just even if uh, you you conduct phishing training or have those implemented people still click on stuff is there just a, a general sort of laissez-faire attitude or, or reluctance to kind of care? Like what is what is the challenge for you guys from your customers? Please feel free to drop a note in the chat box so we can see. I thought your slide earlier, George, uh, was so interesting uh, where you described, well, if you go on the dark web, this is what it's gonna cost you. The economics of phishing are so weighted in favor of bad actors, it's, it's, uh, it's just tremendously unfair. It's so easy to do, it's so uh, cheap to do, and it's now so prevalent, it's it's beyond shocking. Yeah, and, and I can add to that as well, though, and there, again, another cheeky stat that I find, it, it's just for the US, but I think it's still prevalent, at zero point, what is it, point zero five percent of cybercrime is prosecuted. 
So, you know, they said like, crime pays and if you can, so crime is paying for, for cyber crime and you're more than likely to get away with it in the current economy. So that's why a lot of, particularly young people are, are turning to it. Um, thanks for putting the, the results up there, Triva. So yeah, almost, with almost 70%, it's, uh, it's fishing. So very, very interesting. Um, that's that's coming out top and not really too surprising either i think you know that's that's definitely the the sort of gateway for um for cyber crime and criminals getting in touch with stuff right but yeah please drop uh, any comments you guys have in the chat if you guys want to expand on, on why that is um so back to the slides as i mentioned we have these kind of five key pillars what i would start doing then is actually highlighting your values and msp and the services you provide as to how you are going to proactively manage and prevent these kind of things happening. So starting with phishing, uh, obviously we have uh, an, uh, lots of tools on, on the market, you know, with the um, uh, Titan HQ um, being a great one. Uh, and, and the other thing I would add guys is like, your customers don't care what a Titan HQ or what an augment is. I think this is how you want to position your services. You don't need to name drop us. You just need to highlight what the problem is, how you're going to fix it, and how much it's going to cost. So if we can just click through these, uh, Triva, um, so they come up below. So again, it's and, and again, like make it about them. It's you. You're the user. It's your security. I'm helping you. Okay. So phishing, boom, anti-phishing. We're actually just going to block the vast majority of these terrible emails that come through because we have sophisticated software in place that can spot spelling mistakes or risky-looking email addresses or things like that. And then security training. So even if the ones that do get through, we'll be able to educate you and, and put you through some programs or you should be able to spot them as well. What to look for, or what to challenge. Uh, oh, and Jeff, I know you, got, you probably have a lot more experience in the kind of fishing realm than I do. Any any comments from you on this side of the, the fence? Yeah, it uh, it's, it's a really interesting place to be. Uh, there are a wide variety of techniques uh, and tricks that malicious actors are using. Uh, security training is absolutely essential to bolster uh, people's knowledge, and I'm going to talk about it uh, again in a minute. Um, but you know, sophisticated security training will help prepare end users uh, for the variety of attacks that they're going to face, because the whole thing is a pretense. The whole thing is a trick. Malicious actors are trying to convince your users they're somebody they're not, and uh, I would recommend installing a healthy sense of paranoia within your end users. Uh, and security training uh, and education gets that across. You know, again, uh, Titan HQ have products dealing with all all of this, and we're more than happy to speak about them. Yeah, I I really like that term, uh, a healthy sense of paranoia for sure. Um, and then you know, with the with the last three, this is where I, I would urge you to to not get too technical. I think on the the phishing and this because that's very hands on with the users, they're going to understand that. But highlighting, look, everyone should know what MFA is at this point, or unless you're like my mum who doesn't, and that's a separate story uh, altogether with trying to get her phone unlocked after she broke it. Um, but you know, she's uh, different, different. Uh, she, a woman of a certain vintage, we'll say. Uh, so uh, yeah, that was rather tricky. But most folks will understand what MFA is, but not everyone has it on because you know it's it's irritating. It it it, it slows us down, but it is paramount. To have. It's, it's non-negotiable. I would just say if I was an MSP, MFA is on for three six five and a range of these other things and it's it's non-negotiable and quite frankly anybody who has a problem with you stating that you probably don't want to be working with them anyway okay so don't be don't be afraid to draw your line in the sand and i think mfa is, is definitely uh one that you want to hang your hat on there uh then you want to talk about application security so that comes back to you doing sort of the the hard yards with uh, configuring things but again with products like titan and augment we're going to make that easy for you so it's very very simple for you to, to, to manage monitor uh, and control that across multiple tenants and then ultimately everyone wants to have that insurance back up again most people get it because they've had some incident on their own personal computer or their phone where something bad has happened and it's been terrible not being able to restore it and it's been great whenever you can just click a button and go oh there's all my photos or my message history 
my corporate or my my, my own uh, personal cloud data. So I think a lot of people understand and get back up to. And again, I would be bundling this all into a cybersecurity package and say, Mr. Customer, you know, it's going to be X amount of euros or pounds or dollars uh, per user per month. And a top line is the problem. Bottom line is how we're fixing it. Bottom line is uh, is, is the the dollar cost. Well, the, next slide, please. So we'll we'll close out in, in terms of the presentation just on these five points. Um, the first is education. I, I thought, George, your phrase, and if you don't mind, I'm going to steal. Security uh, isn't a product; it's a discipline, and that discipline starts with ed education. Your, your customers, your end users need to understand the oper the environment that we operate in now. Uh, threats are multifaceted, common, common and persistent. You know, this isn't going away. Cybersecurity is always going to be a feature of your working life, uh, and it's a it's a feature of everybody's daily life. Um, thanks to uh, smishing attempts. Uh, and and vishing attempts um so education just getting that message across to people critically important uh, then being able to audit your environment you know make sure that your configuration is correct your alerts are correct monitoring is correct uh, and then having to do that across multiple tenants uh, you need a solution that simplifies this and makes sure that it's accurate uh, at scale um, Training is, well, in my opinion, the uh, the practical application of that education, uh, and it, it's combined with simulation. And you know, it's that's very easy for me to speak about because we've got products that do specifically this in Titan HQ. Um, it's really important to do this and do this well. Uh, Safe Titan, our, one of our products, uh, tailor security awareness training based on the specific behaviors of individual employees. So we create a personalized approach to training and that is really important because that healthy sense of paranoia that I talked about earlier, that comes from the education and it comes from, you know, let's look at my behavior. Let's see what I'm doing. Let's see where the gaps are uh, and let's, you know, let's plug them. Again, simulation, supports that training process. Uh, the final point here is reporting. Um, and as MSPs, I, I know that uh, this is a critical concern for you, but in terms of security, uh, effective reports allow for reflection and identification of gaps. Uh, and whether that's an analysis of how your users did on phishing simulation, or how effective the configurations that you've installed are across multiple tenants. Uh, reporting is essential to highlight those gaps so that you can act on them, so that you can improve and enhance uh, and just constantly get better because this threat is never going away. George, any thoughts? Yeah, I think that it's a great five-step process for, for any MSP to follow. And, and I would look at it like a little sandwich with the uh, probably points one and, and five being the things to prioritize. Two, three, and four are, are what you guys are gonna have access to in your own toolkit. For education, it is paramount in, in building that rapport and asserting yourself as that IT expert. And I think it's it, there, there's a lot of ground to make up there for, for some MSPs. Uh, some are very good at it, others you know, um, need to, to put a, a, a little bit more focus on it. And just think about some of the interactions that you have with other professionals in your own personal life, mechanics, doctors, dentists. You know, you don't challenge them, they're the experts. You guys are the IT experts. Like, you know, be, be confident in your own ability and you don't need to be arrogant in terms of how you're uh, coming across certain things, but but do, do be assertive. And once you do that, then that's where, kind of skipping it back to the point five, like show your work with reports. I'm sure there's a lot of people on this call that have had that question from clients. Well, everything's broken. What am I paying you for? Oh, everything's working fine. What am I paying you for? Show them. Show them with reports from Titan, from Augment. Here's all the things that I'm doing in the background that you don't even know that's happening to make sure you're protected because I'm an absolute rock star of an IT professional. And that's why you're paying me however many euros I say 
per month per user. So, and if you, and if you don't like it, you can you can find somebody else because you'll be breached probably within six months. And you know, I like the, the like the time is now, guys, to kind of start putting your line in the sand, and just being adamant and assertive with 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 customers and cementing your position as that expert. And if anybody wants any more guidance or stats or help with that, hit me up on LinkedIn, George Smith Augment. Make sure you put Augment because. Uh, you'll not be finding me just putting in George Smith on LinkedIn, I tell you that, but I, I'm, I love having these conversations. And I used to work at an MSP doing business development, so I'm happy to, to share any knowledge or give any tips or assets. Um, yeah, just ping me on LinkedIn. All righty, Treva, do we have any questions that have come through or does anyone want to ask any now that we have some time? Yeah, we have some here. George, Owen, thank you so much. That was such a uh, a very interesting session. Uh, so many key takeaways. Uh, I thought like that one stat was really interesting. One billion emails exposed. Like when you think about it, it's just actually crazy. And um, I really also liked your keep a simple approach, George. I think uh, less is more sometimes. Uh, there's no point. Even I see it, you know, working with our MSPs, uh, with our data sheets, you know, it's you don't need to give uh, the, uh, the end, end users, you know, all the details of what, everything we do just you know we, all they need to know is you know we help your email security you know they don't need the the go to go through the weeds so yeah i think that, that approach is really interesting um yeah so if anyone has any questions you can enter them now i've got a couple of questions coming in um and just a couple of comments from the poll which i'll read out which are re was really interesting um Stuart says here, most compromises are where a client user clicks a link in a phishing email, which I'm sure is a very common uh, common mistake that we can definitely help with. Um, and another really nice comment here we had from ba uh, Brandy. And she, uh, Brandy says, uh, we have clients who click on anything. Um, yeah, we have clients who click on anything. The issues has significantly dropped since we integrated Spam Titan and Fish Titan in our environment. So yeah, some really Lovely. nice feedback. Lovely. And we didn't pay Brandy to say that, by the way. <laughs> um, another um, kind of respond or poll um, message from our poll as well is the reason for one of the poll answers is needing help with understanding MFA and then to get properly into Microsoft Authenticator app. Um, another interesting point. Anyway, okay, so we're getting to questions now. There's loads coming in, so I'll just try to get through them all. As I mentioned, if I don't get through them all um, today, we'll, cont we'll contact you all directly with the answers. So hopefully we'll get through um, as many as we can. Let's see now. Okay, one for you, Owen. So what's the best argument for using spam Titan in combination with Microsoft 365? For example, functionality that does not exist within the Microsoft suite. Um, it, so using spam Titan with M365 uh, puts spam Titan out in front of M365 as it's a securing email gateway. And that means it's your email system of record. Um, we find that it has a more rigorous uh, assessment of uh, anti-spam, anti-phishing uh, than M365, and we find that uh, the volume of malicious mails that you receive as a result uh, are greatly, greatly diminished. Now, no system is perfect. Uh, you know, Spam Titan isn't, M365 isn't, and that's why we really recommend uh, layering the applications together. So I hope that answers that. Brilliant. Um, let's see. Some other questions. There's somebody here, I'm just trying to pick one that might uh, suit a lot more people. Should MSPs um, shouldn't MSPs already be securing Microsoft 365 by default? A lot of SMB customers would assume so. How do they have that conversation? 
Yeah, I'll take that one. Um, so the first question, shouldn't they be due by default? Yes. Uh, follow question, are they? Depends, I think. Uh, I, I think, you know, there's, it depends on the type of MSP, the size, who, where the responsibility falls. But again, if you think of it as like you're a 19 year old, fresh out of school technician coming in to work at an MSP and someone sits you down in your chair and says, okay, your job is to configure M365, away you go. It's kind of tricky, right? It's, it's a bit of a labyrinth. And today or previously, if you were doing that manually, like you're literally going check by check by check by check by check for tenant number one, right? Securing that then going to tenant number two. By the time you've got to tenant number nine or 10, it's Wednesday morning, and you've probably got to go back to the first guy you did on Monday morning. And all of a sudden that 19 year old is kind of going, oh, I don't like my life very much. So maybe it doesn't do as good a job as, as he should be. Um, the the follow-up question about, you know, how do you have that conversation? That's when we get a lot. And uh, I get that some people are uh, trepidatious around having it because they're, they're, I think the main concern is the client's kind of going, well, well, aren't you doing this already? I think the key things that you can point out are, number one, Microsoft says this, not me. Here's what Microsoft says. Number two, yes, I am, but security is a discipline, not a product. And things are ramping up so much that we now are spending so much more time than we previously were. And we all, we want, again, it's, it's your choice. I, I personally wouldn't say, and we want to invest in these tools to make it easier. I would just say we need more time, we need more resources. Uh, and that's why we're increasing your price because here's some stats that show you that, that the huge increase uh, in cyber attacks that, that we've seen. And as you know, Mr. Customer, M365 is you know, what your business runs on and 60% of uh, small and medium businesses that suffer a breach go out of business. So can you afford not to invest in cybersecurity? And the last thing I'd leave you with is, uh, if you don't, somebody else will. It's that simple. I was at, a, at an MSP peer group, uh, a big boardroom, about uh, 15 MSPs total, uh, you know, uh, six or so on each side. And it was split right down the middle of the table, uh, this exact topic where one side like, look, we can't do this. Our customers already think that we're doing this. And if we go and say, okay, we want more money for like security, they're gonna ask us like, well, haven't you guys been doing this the whole time? And it's gonna be a whole kerfuckus and just it's gonna be a bit of a nightmare to deal with. And the guys on their side of the table were like, great, awesome, we'll take them, we'll take them, we'll have them. Like, we're going to go to all of our customers and say, we're doing this, price is going up, new line item, enhanced Microsoft security. Uh, and this is this is the way I would do it for, for everyone who's listening. It's the key takeaway. Uh, the two, the two uh, highest organ donation countries in the world are Costa Rica and Denmark. And the reason why they're the two, the two highest is because those two countries flipped the uh, instead of opt-in, it's opt-out. So whenever you're born in one of those countries, you automatically are an Oregon donor, unless you want to fill out the paperwork to say, actually, I don't want to do that. No problem. The reality is we know in many of the countries we live in, with the opt-in, people go, oh, I'd like to be an Oregon donor. I'll do it. Oh, I've got to fill out this paperwork. Okay, I'll do it tomorrow or next week. And then you can keep putting it off and it never gets done. So what I would do is for, the, for upping your prices or introducing a new enhanced Microsoft security service to deal and pay for this problem is you just add it to the bill. Now you you send an email, you let people know, it's not a surprise, and just say, this is happening next month, new bill, you're gonna see this new line item. If you wanna talk about it, here's a link to a calendar to book a meeting. We had a client who did this, he has about 60 odd tenants, three people booked a call. Everyone else just started paying. Three people booked, two of them just wanted more information. They're like, we're actually kind of interested in some of the stats, can we learn more, can we explain, we wanna understand the problem. One client was like, no, I'm not paying, and Frankly, the MSP admitted that they were a client that they were kind of better off without anyway. One of those clients that take up too, too much of your time. So to answer that question, just like if you don't, somebody else will just add, add it to the bill. And once you've explained what's happening, I guarantee you guys, like people worry about price, price increases all the time. But we as consumers know groceries are going up, bills are going up, everything's going up. So it, it's not, it won't be as bad as you think it is. If That's you can such a... That's great. Uh, great advice, George. I even was speaking to a customer of ours last week about this exact topic about, you know, they wanted to bring in fish titan on top of their spam titan offering, but they weren't really sure how to bring in a conversation of price points or adding to the price point. So I think that was a really good tip. And uh, I might reach out to them and let them send this recording so you can listen back. Yeah, really good tip. Hopefully uh, everyone can learn a few bits from you. 
I think we'll wrap it up there because I'm very conscious of time and I've given people a few minutes before their next meeting. So I just want to say thank you all so much for attending today. I really appreciate you taking out your time out of your busy schedules. Owen and George, thank you so much for you both for being here. Um, and just a final um, kind of point to mention, um, Titan HQ and Augment will be offering a pricing offer or a pricing deal um, for anyone that's interested. If you're interested, we have a survey at the end of the webinar. It will just pop up. So just let us know uh, if you're interested in the pricing, but it'll also just give us some feedback on the webinar. If you enjoyed it, what your kind of key takeaways, your points. It's always good to have a bit of an idea um, if you enjoy the webinar or not. And then just some points here on how to reach out to us. Uh, I know someone was particularly looking for your contact details, George. So I will send them on to that person. But yeah, yeah. thank you all so much. I uh, appreciate your time. Yeah, thanks to you very much, Stephen. Thanks everyone else for joining today and uh, great uh, hosting with you, Owen. Thanks, George. Same. I can understand why you've won awards for this. Uh, thank yeah, you everyone nice. for joining. Have a great day. Thanks, William. Bye, everyone. See you next time.